Hey everyone, welcome to Ripstop on the Record. I'm Jameson. I'm Jameson. <laughs> I'm Isaac. <laughs> Today we are talking about how to make shoulder straps. Shoulder straps are one of the most defining features of a pack. I mean, they determine the comfort, how your pack rides. Some people even buy a pack entirely based on the shoulder strap design. That's me. Wink, wink at, at Carter. But it can be hard to find the right shoulder strap with the right pack and the right features insert all the DIY potential. So we're going to talk about all the different strap styles and variations and accessories that you can add to make the perfect shoulder strap. But there's kind of a lot there. So we're going to break this into seven different sections. Uh, and hopefully by the end of this episode, you'll be able to leave with a pretty good idea of what kind of shoulder strap you want and how to make it for the most part. So we're going to get to all the shoulder strap knowledge you need to know in just a minute. But first, a huge update from us. We're going to trail days. 2023, we're coming in strong with a couple of really fun things. Specifically, we're giving everyone that comes to our booth and signs up for our email list a free Dyneema wallet or DZP, I think, CPK. I don't remember. Get the acronyms mixed up. But this is a limited edition uh, Hunter Green with mustard yellow Appalachian Trail logos all around it. You can get that for free. So come to our booth and check it out. For purchase, As we... Yes, that is a kit. Sorry, not they're not finished items. For purchase, you can get this super sick roll top dry bag with a mountainscape on it. Also very uh, Blue Ridge Mountains appropriate, uh, made by our very own Justin. And those are going to be for sale as a kit or as a finished item from our friends over at Hightail. So come check it out. Roll top dry bag is awesome. Beautiful pattern. Get your free uh, zip wallet. Not to mention, we're going to be welcoming like four friends. Uh, who are the friends that we're bringing in again? Uh, Connor from Hightail. Yep. Or David uh, from Hightail. David. Con- Somebody yeah. from... Yeah, Hightail's uh, coming. UGQ, uh, our friends Paul and Missy, the OGs. Well, some of the OGs. Uh, who else? Almond's right. Yep, Livio and Jen are coming. And, and the Nashvillian Pack Boys. Nashville yes, pack. and our, our friends from Nashville. So uh, there's going to be a ton of raffles. Let me just tease it right now. We're giving away a lot of stuff. Uh, quilts, packs, accessories. Um, Hugs. Yeah, Carter's giving away free hugs. So I am giving them away, but Kyle will be doing the hugging. <laughs> oh, God. I just have the raffle tickets for He that. doesn't know yet, but he's going to be super down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the raffles are going to be awesome. Please come visit us at Trail Days if you're going to be around. All right. So like we teased, the main part of this episode is teaching you how to build shoulder straps. So the first section is pack application. Before you can decide on what straps you want to make and how to make them, you first need to define what it is that you want to accomplish with your pack. In this section, we'll talk about the goal of your pack, the body type, but first, the pack style. So you kind of have to figure this out before anything else, right? You got to know if you're going to make a big pack, a little pack, a vest style pack, a day pack, an ultralight pack. All the packs out there, you got to know what you want to make. Um so we have, I mean, a few, just a, a couple. Uh, I think we have 15 uh, packs in here right yeah, now. Yeah, just a couple of things to show. Um, I mean, you got anything from like a little guy like this, little day pack, roll top dry bag, to some of these large ultralight backpack, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so the importance of knowing the pack style is because different packs need to carry different things and carry different weights, right? So if you're someone who has a base weight of like 20 pounds, you know, you're going to be out, I don't know, trekking Iceland or something. I was trying to think of a place that would be um, hard, but I think Iceland's probably not that hard. Um, You might need to be carrying 50 pounds in there, right? So the type of shoulder straps, the frame that you're going to use, load lifters and all the stuff we're going to get into the first step is to know what is the pack going to be used for, because that's going to inform your strap design, how much cushioning you need, all of that. So that's where we start. Um, The second part of that is not only do you need to know the application of your pack, but you also need to know yourself. So people that have breasts or people that, uh, what? Wide boned, thin boned. Yeah, if you're a if you are a husky man, yeah, you might need to have straps that have S styles, S style uh, curvature uh, for different anatomies. Um, if you got a super wide, muscular, beefy neck, you might need to space your straps further apart. Um, so this is like 
one of the most important things. I know companies are starting to do a lot better about this, but for years, basically all backpacks just had like straight up not good straps, right? They weren't made for uh, women or like anything like that. So this is, this is a spot where DIY becomes really important because then you can say, Hey, like, I don't know. I broke my collarbone when I was 20 and it really hurts on this side. So I'm going to make a strap that goes around that or whatever. But yeah, so that's the second part is, do you have any special accommodations that you need to make for your body type? Yeah. The, the third piece is really the goal of your pack. And and that kind of relates to how you want to carry your gear. Uh, A lot of these, packs that we'll, we'll show you here. If you're watching the YouTube video, then we'll show direct examples. And if you're not watching, then we'll give you links that you can follow in the description. But uh, it's how you want to cure your gear. So these straps will go anywhere from having a ton of shoulder pockets, like something like the Nashville or a vest style strap, where you can stash stuff over your shoulder, on your chest, below your chest, under your rib cage, stuff like that, to having like a really streamlined uh, system. So a lot of it depends on how you want to carry your gear. So think about that as well. If you want a lot of weight on your strap, or if you want to be really simple. And I think the final aspect of the straps that we're going to talk about today is load lifters. And this is kind of a topic that is, um, seems to be kind of controversial on the internet, (laughs) uh, for some reason, um, just as to their function, whether or not they actually work, what they do. Um, but yeah, load lifters are something that you need to think about whether or not you want to add to your straps. Um, and this is going to depend on what style of pack you make, right? So in my experience, in my opinion, load lifters aren't necessary if you don't have a pack that has like a tall brain or that extends above your shoulders very much. Because in my experience, the load lifters help to bring that load closer to your body, closer to your center of gravity. Um, and then again, if you don't have a frame, if you don't have like a frame sheet or anything like that on your pack, then these load lifters really aren't going to do much other than to change the height of your strap, which I'll let Carter talk about a little more. And then if you don't have any frame, then it's just going to kind of deform your bag. Yeah. So I'm probably in the minority of people that unless I'm using a vest style strap, which we'll talk about, uh, which you want to have touching your body as much as possible. Like I always like to have load lifters. Uh, Isaac's definitely right. Um, If you don't have them connected directly to a crossbar of a frame, uh, they're not going to do as much, but they can still be helpful. Like sometimes I'll use them to like, I'll normally have them engaged. And then like, if my shoulders are getting tired or whatever, I'll just loosen them up to take the load like away from my shoulders for a minute. Um, but you can use the load lifters to change the height of your straps a little bit. So if you might be a little bit in between sizes, now I'm not saying like you should buy a small size pack when you have a 36 inch torso. Also, if you have a 36 inch torso, you should probably <laughs> take photos of that and send it to Ripley's or something because you should be in the NBA. But anyways, it can help you to fine tune your fit a little bit, bring the straps up a little bit, change the angle. Um, but yeah, something you want to decide if kind of the same thing applies as Jameson was talking about, where maybe you want a more streamlined as light as possible backpack. You carry small amounts of gear or maybe it's for a camera bag or whatever, and you don't need that, then since you're making it yourself, you have the option to do whatever you want. One, I will, I will show uh, one quick thing. Um, this is an example of a situation where I don't think the load lifters are necessarily uh, useful, but you can be the judge of that. So I have a Mystery Ranch uh, Urban Assault 22, I think. Um, and this pack is, a, by all means, a day pack, right? Um, but it does have load lifters. Oh yeah, those are, they attach to the top of the frame sheet here. And for the majority of the time, I have no more than 10 pounds in this backpack, right? I have put 40 pounds in it, uh, and I have tightened the load lifters. And in that situation, I could notice a slight difference. Um, but again, this pack doesn't have a waist belt. It doesn't have like a full frame. It just has a thin frame sheet. So This is probably a situation where these load lifters aren't really that necessary, but you can, it's your pack. You can even worse yet though, your thermo drops not working. Yeah. I got to change the battery. (laughs) Yeah. So I think this is an example of how not to do um, load lifters because ideally, so when the load lifters are engaged properly, you want them to be at a 45 degree angle 
from the frame sheet of the pack. So down like this, these are so close to the top of the strap because it's a small bag that they can't effectively do what they want that you want them to do. Right. Um, an example of uh, something kind of unique is that this backpack doesn't, this is a frameless backpack. This weighs like 10 ounces. My friend Jeremy made this for me quite a while ago. But this actually has permanent load lifters. So this is an example of basically what this does is just changes the direction of the straps to go upward. And it's always giving you a little bit of support. Like it's always pulling this load in. But as you can see, the collar goes way up from the straps. And the attachment point of the straps is down here. So you have, you know, three inches of space. And that's what allows this to be at basically 45 degrees it's like a load lifter offset where on your urban assault isaac the load lifter off offset was like three quarters of an inch where that one is like three and a half inches almost yeah. yeah cool so one thing i didn't mention in talking about the goal of your pack was the frame and we won't get into frames a ton because well when you're building your shoulder straps we can only tackle one subject at a time really however uh that will your frame preference and your frame desires will greatly impact your straps specifically with load lifters and, and a couple other options and how you attach it. So we'll mention frame stuff in the episode, but uh, we're not really going to go into like frame sheets versus bars and U frames and stuff like that. Cool. So just a little bit of recap under pack application, you're looking for pack style, body type, the goal of your pack, and then your load lifters. And I, I guess kind of what your frame options are going to be like. Section two, we're talking about strap styles. So earlier we said that straps are the most defining feature of a pack, which they totally are. But to get more specific on that, it's really the strap style uh, that is so defining. When you know about the style, then you'll be able to better understand the kind of evergreen debate on straps, which leads me to the most popular strap style. Yeah, so the J-strap is, you know, kind of your most typical strap that you're going to see on a backpack, whether it's from Walmart or REI. If you're getting a day pack, just a simple do all, be all type pack. For for listeners, the shape is straight over the shoulder, over the chest, and it'll curve under the ribs. But yeah. imagine like very little shape over uh, for the first about ten inches. So this is a pack that Jameson made, and if you can see, it kind of just starts as a straight line, and then there's a slight uh, bend out to your outward side. So if it's on your your left strap, it's going to be bending out to the left. Um, and there are, there are more, um, more, what's the word I'm pronounced, for? more pronounced versions of this and less pronounced. This is definitely less pronounced. Um, and then you have packs like this light AF over here. <laughs> Things enormous. That essentially looks like a turkey leg or something <laughs> lamb leg. I, I don't even yeah. know. This thing is like super pronounced. So, but that's your basic J style strap. So the reason that you might choose a J strap is because a, it's the easiest to design. Um, also it's aesthetically pleasing for simple things. So like EDC packs and other things where, you don't have to carry it around for 25 miles. You're not going to run with it unless, I guess, something really bad happens. Um, so oftentimes they look nice on simple bags. So you might see them on like a leather backpack or, or a school backpack. Um, but I think I'm probably definitely in the majority of people that understand that J-straps are not the most comfortable for hiking. Except for the light AF straps, but that's kind of a hybrid J and F strap. Uh which I guess I'll just talk about S-straps now. Good segue. So S-straps, uh, and we have a few examples. Um, let me see here. This one you can kind of tell. Some of them are more pronounced than others, but basically what this does is it puts a curve at the top in the opposite direction of the bottom. So you still have the one going over the ribs. But at the top, you also have a curve because that matches your shoulders and your chest, right? So on a J-strap, usually it just like goes in between your armpit and like straight down. And in order to carry your backpack properly, you want to have surface area to distribute the load. So it's more comfortable. You also don't want to have it chafing different parts of your body. Um, so if you have a larger chest, you're going to want some 
you, you're going to want the strap to contour around that instead of just going straight over it or not even fitting on your body at all. For the listener, you can imagine an S-strap. These are all appropriately named because they're slightly shaped like the, the letter, but the, the S-strap's going to come over your shoulder. It's curving away from your neck a little bit, in over your chest, and then out over your rib cage. Yeah, so you can uh, see it here S. it comes out and then goes back in and then out again. Yeah. Uh, this is super popular for a lot of hiking packs. It's often going to cause less friction, less chafing over long miles, better tapering, but can be harder to make on your own without a template. Yeah. Oh, also, I wanted to say here that uh, in terms of non-vest style straps, I strongly believe that Light AF has, especially the long version, has the best shoulder straps ever. <laughs> Shout out to Chris. Like, they're just incredible. I know that a lot of people talk about them, um, but I've even had him make me straps for a DIY backpack because I knew that they it's were. High I knew that they were going to be so comfortable that. There's no point in trying to make my own in that case. And of course, I'm privileged to be able to like laser cut them out and ask him to make them for me. But yes, S straps, in my experience, even for people that might not need it, they might not be a curvy person, usually are going to be more comfortable. Cool. All right. Next up, the vest style strap. So this is a day pack that I made a couple years ago with this limited run DCF stuff. Um, but the, the point is the vest style. I made these by cutting a pair off an Amazon uh, pack so I could trace them out. This is just some spacer mesh. But the vest style is most defining because it's normally a super accentuated uh, J with a lot of tapering and a lot of space under the rib. Um, so it's going to come straight it's going to come straight over your shoulder in a lot of ways come over get pretty wide so you can stuff soft flasks and snacks and such and then go out over your rib cage so you can put snacks kind of under the arm as well uh, this one has a three pocket design with one high kind of over the chest one low over the chest and then one on the ribs it's got two sternum straps uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it um, i'll pull up another vest so the the main reason for vest style would be like you're really moving fast right you need everything accessible you're usually not going to be carrying a ton of weight on your back and you you want it to lock in so that when you're running, nothing's bouncing or rubbing on you. As I say, vest minimizes bounce a ton. So this is a pack from KS Ultralight, uh, a running vest style. And this one has a, a stripped down pocket design, but you can see pretty accentuated tapering. This one doesn't go over the rib as much, um, but it's really to, like Carter said, to lock down the weight as much as possible. But uh, I think most people can picture a vest style. Yeah. And throwing it back to the section we were talking about with just the type of pack uh, you, that you want to make, um, just think of vest style straps as something that you're going to put on a pack that you're not going to be carrying a lot of weight. Like that's not something that you're going to, you know, stuff 40 pounds in and so be comfortable. Isaac's totally right. I will show an example of that. This is a, ULA fast pack that is like a this is a 45 liter vest sounds as weird yeah, or it is as weird as it sounds comfortable to me it's, it's odd don't get me wrong I'm, I'm not gonna I don't have anything against ULA and also I wouldn't buy it but it's totally cool this is a good pack that I've taken on uh, several bike back packing trips now with Carter but this is another example of just kind of a really interesting interesting step well if you want to we can kind of segue with that one because I would refer to that as a hybrid style like in the other in typical vest style straps a it's like lockdown and tons of surface area um, because you want to distribute that weight as much as you can. Um, but my preferred strap at this point is like a hybrid of the two, uh, like a regular shoulder strap with foam. Oh, also like normal vest style shoulder straps are usually just like one piece of spacer mesh yeah, or not even that. Yeah, Maybe some type of like stretchy mesh. Um, Nashville might be closer. So this is a Nashville pack copy strap or are they actually there? They're actually the Nashville pack straps. The, yeah. So these are, uh, I mentioned light AF is having the most comfortable, like standard straps. I would say that Nashville by far has the most comfortable everything else strap for me at a lot of different body sizes that I've been. So they kind of have a hybrid approach, right? Like you still get some lockdown, you still get a lot of surface area, um, but these can handle a little bit more weight. Uh, they're a little bit more padded. These don't have foam in them, but they have two layers of spacer mesh. Um, another example of this in a more easy to see way, you can see why I call these hybrid straps. Is this Mountain Smith Zerk? 
So you can see these straps are actually padded with thick foam as well as being like they almost have like an S style and then a vest at the bottom. So they're a really cool design. But what they allow for is that weight to be distributed more across your body so you feel less of the weight at the tops of your shoulders. Uh, they also give you access to a bunch of different like gear storage because you have more strap up here to hold stuff. Um, but yeah, I think hybrid is a really cool design. I like that people are continuing to try to innovate on shoulder straps, but I think having the convenience of being able to carry water up here, but also the lockdown, uh, if you need to scramble or do, I don't know, the cops are coming <laughs> when you're out in the woods. Uh, I really like the the hybrid approach. So, yeah. Once you start to define the strap styles, you have a better idea of what you really like. Cause you can look at your own pack. Maybe you like it, maybe you hate it and you'll know, Oh, I really don't like J or I really love the S style. And, um, but in terms of making, so if you're making your first set of straps, that's part of what we're doing here is trying to help you know how to make a strap. Um, an easy J is definitely your way to go. That EDC pack that Isaac held up earlier that I made, it's a really easy shape to figure out in terms of making your very first pack. You can make it as wide as you want. You can taper it some, but it's a really easy shape to start with because a lot of these take a lot of contouring and they can totally be done. A lot of these packs were, were handmade um, or in some capacity. Like I've made the Nashville straps on my own before. I've made S straps, J straps, vests, um, but the J is the easiest one to start with at first. Especially when it comes to uh, turning it right side out. Or inserting foam. Oh, I did want to show one more. We'll get to all that stuff soon. So this is another backpack that is like a hybrid. So you can see this obviously has an S shape to it. Like you can literally see the S in there. But it's a little bit wider. Most packs are about, usually the width on the straps is like two and a half inches. These are a little bit wider than that. Around like three and a half in some points. But they have a double sternum strap. So you still get that vest style lock in. And four pockets, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, and lots of pockets. So just another, I think this is a great example of a hybrid where it takes like some S-strap stuff uh, with with the foam and then also double sternum straps and more surface area. So if you're feeling real uh, uh, frisky, sounds weird, but that's what came to mind. So I'm going to say it. If you're feeling frisky and maybe it's not the first pack you've made, I would highly recommend figuring out hybrid your some hybrid approach to your body style because likely this will be something that you can't buy but that will fit you better than anything all right let's move on to section three which is materials and components so the style of the strap is noticeable from the eye but how the strap looks is kind of marginally important compared to how comfortable it is and comfort has a heavy basis on the material so let's chat about some of the most popular strap materials well, I think off the dome, the number one, 210D grid stop. It's used on like four of the packs we have in here. <laughs> I think pack makers choose it because it's a trusted fabric. It's been in the industry for a long time. It's very water resistant. Looks cool. It looks really cool. It's durable. It also has stretch, right? So one thing that, we'll, that we can talk about now is that often I find that shoulder straps that are using laminate materials are usually not as comfortable or they might even experience more stress than other materials is because they don't have any give or stretch to them. So like we're talking about like wanting things to be anatomically sized and designed, but then you put like cardboard on them that doesn't move with you as you're hiking or frolicking about the workplace or whatever you're doing with your, with your backpack. So I think you see more and more now, uh, I think when DCF and stuff first became popular, a lot of companies started putting that everywhere because it's so light. Yeah. A lot of those companies now aren't doing that anymore, and they're using some sort of woven, like 210 grid stop or aerobic or something like that because of – they might even angle it sideways, if you will, on the bias to give it even more stretch. Uh, but, yeah. I forgot to mention this before before you go, Isaac. There's a couple of parts of the materials that you're going to need uh, and components for a strap. So what Carter's mentioning are great face materials. They're going to be the majority of the strap um, where you're going to anchor most of your pieces. Like you're going to see that 
most. There's a backing material, which is going to be on your shirt or on your skin, you know, comfortable, something we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, often straps up a cushion material, material on the inside that you can't see at all, but that would be a, a closed cell foam, an EVA foam or something inside the strap. Uh, and then there's often accessory materials for just the look of it all to make it spice it up, to match the pack. And then, you know, your components and uh, narrow goods and such. So Carter talked about the face material. Isaac, why don't you tell us about backing materials? Yeah. So most of the uh, straps that we've shown so far, uh, I believe all have like a spacer mesh, some kind of 3D spacer mesh on the inside of the strap. Um, and this this really helps to like a give a little bit of padding. Um, so if you weren't going to do any kind of foam on the inside with a lightweight day pack like this, I think that just has spacer mesh, right? Or this has a really thin foam, but I, okay, it would it would be just fine without it. So it gives you a little bit of of padding. B, um, it's going to feel nicer on your skin. Um, if you're wearing, you know, a, a tank top or if your like collar comes down a little bit and it's like on your neck, it's not going to abrade as much as uh, like a, a stiffer um, grow grain or something like that. Um, so hopefully it will be nicer on your skin. And C, uh, it helps with breathability. So it's going to absorb a little bit of that sweat. Um, rather than if you're using like a, a DCF or laminate material, like Carter was talking about, it's not going to absorb anything and will be like wearing a garden hose <laughs> on your shoulder. The only time I'd really Weird. recommend going for anything other than spacer mesh as a backing material is like a lightweight vest option like this. This KS ultralight vest doesn't have a, it's not like a standard 3D spacer mesh, but it still is. It's like a an ultralight version of that, but still hyper breathable. Uh, it yeah, it's gonna breathe great. It'll repel water pretty well. Not at least not hold on to water. It's not gonna. It's a light, just a lighter version, but pretty much ubiquitously, you're gonna want to use spacer mesh on your. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I was gonna say is that it also grips your clothing and body better. So like, if you were to just make a strap out of like DCF on both sides it would be incredibly slippery, right? You're going to probably get like blisters because spacer mesh has a texture to it that is like, is going to stay locked in when you tighten down your straps or you tighten down your hip belt. You want that to stay where it is. You don't want your hip belt riding up, you know, to your neck and then your pack's hanging off backwards. Uh, I don't, in retrospect, I actually don't think that's possible. <laughs> um, don't try that either. That sounds dangerous. Um, but yes, that's that's another reason for for the spacer mesh, and I believe most spacer mesh is like it's laminated together, right? There are multiple sections that are laminated. There's like mesh, and then there's like some sort of weird foam stuff, and then more mesh. So, what about cushioning material? Uh, yeah. So we've mentioned it already. The most common, well, you have the basic cushioning, which is going to be the spacer mesh. You can get different thicknesses of that, and that'll give you kind of your base cushion. Um, for backpacking especially or anything that you're going to carry heavier loads with you're going to have you're going to want to put foam in there yeah. usually uh, a uh, like soft but dense foam that's not going to deform or anything like you want it to stay wide and you want all that weight to be distributed properly um, but there are different thicknesses of foam that you could use uh, from a eighth of an inch all the way up to I don't I'm sure somebody out there is using one inch foam but you're a maniac <laughs> um probably five eighths is like the thickest that I've seen gotcha. um actually funny story the one of the first packs I ever made I knew I had to have some foam in there because I just had like one nine ripstop on the shoulder strap or something it's so like oh I should definitely get some foam uh, and it's COVID time so I couldn't really go into very, very many stores like early COVID times um so I just bought some EVA foam on Amazon and I had no idea what the concept of shoulder strap widths or anything were. So I just bought the thickest foam they had on the product page. Like wide or like thick. So I'm pretty sure it is like three quarters of an inch wide. Nice. And it's it's pretty hilarious. I actually sawed it in half. Like I put it in there, I was like, this is this is not gonna work. <laughs> so then I like sawed the foam in half to take it down some. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So take it from Carter, get the right width. Yeah, so somewhere around in that range. Obviously, if you're looking to be lighter, you have lighter weight loads. Maybe you have a wider strap in general that doesn't need as much 
foam in there uh somewhere around an eighth to a half inch probably is, is going to be the spot where you want to be um once you start using thicker foam you do have to design for that right like you're going to need to put allowance in your strap which we can get to in a little bit um but yeah i think uh a nice little foamy uh what's it called Jomi. Foamy Jomi is sometimes just what you need. Yeah. Uh, I will say, so I made a pack one time and I went to Joanne's and got some, I think it was upholstery uh, uh, foam. I don't know what exactly. I don't think it was like a. I think it's like a, it's open cell foam, I think. Yeah, it was. I'm pretty sure it's open cell foam. It's like a light green and it was like, I don't know, half an inch thick. Yeah. It was the absolute worst foam. <laughs> possible for backpack straps so uh high lesson to learn from want. this yeah don't go to joann's and get open cell upholstery foam because oh, it's not gonna because it doesn't provide any support or yeah it just, it just like out immediately. it's like taking a sponge and putting yeah. it on your shoulders yeah. and then trying to carry 30 pounds yeah. well in isaac's case at that time probably 175 pounds of backpacking <laughs> gear and five cast iron skillets <laughs> so no that was my uh tie back backpack oh so I'm going to speed us through and I'll have you guys add on a little excerpts we need to um, just because we're, we're already running a little bit long. But for accessory materials, uh, this is just something that could really match your pack or if you're going to be adding a piping clip like you see on the EDC pack that I had here or other other bags with a, with a piping clip on it. You might see different fabric attached to that than you would on the other part of the strap. Um, it's just to match your pack or to add a little bit of flair. There's not really too much of a functional value to adding accessory fabrics or an accessory material to, the, to, to your strap. Uh, lastly, you're going to need to think about components and narrow goods. So if you're going to be adding grow grain in certain places, if you're going to be adding webbing, what kind, the size, cordage, and stuff like that. Um, we'll talk about accessories that you're going to add to the strap in terms of sternum straps and pockets and stuff a little bit later, but make sure you have all the right narrow goods um, that you're going to attach your strap for as well. Section four is about sternum straps. This is just my opinion, but I really think that the sternum straps can make a DIY pack look really professional. I think it's because this is where you can dig into the massive array of components that are out there. Uh, components can be used for two things, though, really. First, you got to figure out how it attaches to the pack. And second, how the sternum strap will adjust like on the strap itself. So let's start with the former, how it attaches to your pack. Uh, yeah, so there are, in this case, we're talking about how the assembly of the sternum strap literally goes onto your straps. We'll talk about how it might connect over your chest next. Uh, so there are two basic kinds. I'm not sure if we have one here, um, but the most basic kind is that you just sew it onto your strap directly. It doesn't move. It's just there. You find this a lot in... Jan sports. Yeah, more basic backpacks, maybe some EDC or like leather backpacks where it's, yeah. So there's an example of that where it's just sewn in. It also might be sewn in because it's a very custom pack and it has specific spots where you know you want it and you don't need to adjust it. That could be an option for DIY stuff. The more common and I think more usable would be a dynamic or adjustable sternum strap. Now this could be piping like this one right here. If you can see that it's actually, there's a piping clip here and it can slide up and down. Now this one is really tight <laughs> because I don't want to, I don't want it to move once yeah. it's there, but if you need to adjust them, you can. Uh, another option to have it adjustable would be some sort of daisy chain with a piece of hardware or tying a knot or something like that, where you can pop that sternum strap in or pop it out, move it to a different location that better matches your body and lock it back in. I think that's what you're, you'll see. One of those two options are going to be what you see on, especially for backpacking, like every single backpack that exists. Um, just because you want it to be able to fit different people, you want people to be able to customize their stuff, or you want to be able to customize it yourself. What about how it adjusts, Isaac? Uh, up and down, or over your chest? Like different ways you can. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, so there's also going to be adjustability in side to side motion, right? Uh, typically, what you're going to see is some kind of um, side release buckle that has an adjustment on one side. Um, so it just pulls here. And then a lot of times on packs, you'll see some kind of elastic component to the side to side adjustment. Which, yeah, so here's the flat elastic on the bottom, and then this, the webbing is on top. And this just allows you to exhale and inhale comfortably while still retaining that same tightness. Um, I'm trying to think of other... I think most of the side-to-side -side adjustments I've seen are some kind of like side release. Yeah. And really you're just deciding if like which way you want to adjust, you want to pull it to your right, pull it to your left, if you want to adjust on both sides and then how much uh, stretch you want in your system. I mean, for the most part, those are the basic ones uh, for a new strap maker. Uh, it's definitely easiest to do, to do a sew on and then a single side adjust like a the ultralight kitty clip, a side release buckle, go yeah, to your or, dominant I mean, side. And then the, the bunny sternum strap system is, is really convenient too. Um, That's what I meant. The bunny, not the ultra kitty clip. That's yeah. not a turn of strap. <laughs> uh, the, the bunny sternum strap works with half inch webbing. Um, and you basically just do like a daisy chain. You yep. just um, do like a bar tack every so often. So you every half like, inch or whatever, yeah. slide it in. You can slide it in. And then the only thing that I, uh, this is kind of a personal preference, but I really like having a whistle on the sternum strap. Um, just because a whistle is something that not many people really think about but if you um if you do find yourself in a in a bad situation you break your ankle or something uh that whistle is going to come in handy and you don't really think about it you can call for your dog so or that I, yeah i totally agree with isaac so in this pack uh, another option is that you could choose between like a regular buckle or magnetic this one has a magnetic piping clip sternum strap thing but it also doesn't have a whistle which i didn't like so you can actually buy little sternum strap whistles that will just attach onto your pack so that you always have it and you can get them for different sized webbings. Yeah. Uh, and then you can blow it, which I will do right now. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, that's another cool option, especially um, if you really like, you only, you already have some buckles. They're going to work for your pack. You don't want to spend more money uh, to buy complete new buckles. Uh, you could just get, from ebay like a two dollar whistle thing yeah section five attaching the strap to your pack your strap isn't independent of your pack and everyone knows this but you may not know the options that you have when you're attaching the strap to the pack so let's talk about these starting with the top right because your strap's going to attach over your shoulders but also down at your hip so let's start uh at the top of the pack first so the most basic is to sew it into the seam a, any seam, a seam. Uh, Not any seam, only one seam, really. <laughs> well, what I mean by any seam is there may be, depending on how you've constructed the pack, there could be multiple mm, seams yeah. in this area. So like with this mystery ranch, it's sewn into the seam that connects the main, uh, the, the main fabric to like the spacer mesh. Um, but typically it's sewn into a seam like that. Another example while Isaac's talking, uh, same thing. This is sewn in top seam to the top seam, which normally it's going to, you want the seam that it's sewn into to be one that's either designed to be there or is already really strong. Like you wouldn't want to just like, oh, this is where I put my pocket on my backpack. I'm also going to put my straps there. Probably don't do that. It will fall off and you could perish. But yeah, I don't know how well you can see that, but you can see it's literally just sewn right into that seam. Uh, and then you also have uh, sewn on straps. I don't know if we have any. Uh, I don't know if we have any, but z Packs does this on. My EDC pack again. On multiple of their, like I think the Nero does this and a few others where they basically take webbing and then flip it up and sew it directly onto the pack. So this one's kind of in a, this one's in a seam too. That it, well, yes and no. So the, it's hard to tell with sewn in and sewn on sometimes. Sewn in is where there's like 
two separate layers coming together and you putting the seam inside and then on is where like this for this edc pack it is it's sewn onto the back panel and there's often a patch that kind of goes over to cover it up so it, it's in a seam but it's the, the structurally it's tethered to the back panel versus in the seam the reason that you might do this is a to get a lot of times you'll want shoulder straps to be at a certain angle and that can be harder to do uh because you know your shoulders and your neck are at an angle if the pack if the straps come straight out from the pack you're probably going to rub on your neck um in that case you just need to do some more trap workouts to get those traps bigger you got to go to the trap house by the way if that's not the name of a gym i'm starting it <laughs> the trap house would be sick um but yeah so it's either so you can articulate the straps or in like the case of z packs uh they have like a one panel design for their pack it's basically like a tube uh, so there's no seam there to to do that with. So if you're designing your pack and you decide that you want to have a certain style, you might need to sew them directly onto the panel of the pack because you don't have a seam there to work with. Can you talk briefly, Carter, about uh, for people that are making a pack, uh, if they're making one that needs to be form fitting in some way, what sort of angle do they need to look at or how do they calculate the best angle to attach their straps at? Because like for my EDC one, they're, it's at a, like it's flat, but it's at a slight angle. Like I turn the straps out a little bit, but it's an EDC. I'm carrying it from my car to the office. So it's like wearing it for two minutes. But if you've been wearing your pack for a, a bit, you need to get the angle right. So there are lots of ways to do this. Usually one of the best ways is to try on some different packs uh, or don't sew them in yet, or maybe just base them on and see how they lay. But normally I think uh, like, I don't know about math, but like 45 degrees, probably is a good place to start and then you might want to back that off from there so you don't have your straps like going way out here some of that's going to depend on how wide your shoulders are how thick with five c's your neck is uh things like that yeah you can also i mean i've i haven't done this personally but i'm imagining from a patterning perspective you could uh just use like a piece of paper and put it you know behind you can't your, hear you isaac there you go put it behind your uh your shoulder area and just measure that like angle of your shoulders. Have somebody draw that line for you. At least you can figure that out. Totally. That that would be a good, a decent starting point. I think another option that you can do to help with this is like this. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I'll try to show it and then I'll explain it. So this, this pack actually has a panel that's part of the backpack that goes up like in a triangle. And then the straps are sewn onto that. So they're automatically like turned. Uh, and that's how they accomplished that. So it's not a straight seam. It's either a curved or like a seam with an apex. And then you put that along there and it automatically will like angle the straps. Cool. So let's chat about at the hips. So you're going to want to keep that pack. I think there's a couple different ways that you can uh, attach the pack. Oh, we got to talk about the most important thing for straps. Did I skip a section already? Yeah. Oh, shit. Sorry. Removable. All right. Uh, right. You, sorry. You start with remo- removal in. So after you have sewn in, then you have removable straps. Um, and this is kind of up to interpretation uh, for how you want to do that. Uh, one of the packs that I've made, um, I basically used a D ring and sewn sewed it into one of the top seams. And then I just have one set of straps that I just kind of transfer between those two packs. So the, the D ring is, you know, just in this top seam, um, on this pack, there's a roll top and where that roll top meets the body of the pack. That's where I put in the D ring. And the strap attaches to that D-ring by just using a tri-glide and it just kind of pops up through that D-ring and rides that way. That way you have a little bit of movement in that strap. Um, This, this is a pack that I wouldn't put more than 25, 30 pounds in. So it's not uh, that big of a deal, but there's tons of different, different ways to, you know, add or remove straps onto that pack. It's definitely a, a, something I would recommend for people that are maybe making their first set of straps, doing a system like that. Because yeah. you don't have to sew the strap into the pack. You don't have to worry about that. You can make the pack how you wish. As long as you set yourself up so you can attach a strap later, then you can 
perfect the strap later on and you don't have right. to worry about the angle either the nice thing about the d the d-ring and some of these other uh, adjustable strap options that you have so you can mess with it and get the angle right afterwards you don't have to worry about you accidentally sewed one shoulder strap at 45 and one shoulder strap at two degrees and now you're walking around you know with an angled backpack the whole time yep and then i with this one uh, i also wasn't sure if i wanted to stick with the style of strap that i uh, made or if i wanted to make something more complex in the future so yeah that gives you that option so another option and actually i'm going to give another shout out to the nashville pack people because they were one of the first companies that i saw that started doing this on packs that they were making for people and so they basically use a daisy chain similar to how the sternum strap might work um and then there are multiple ways to do this, but like a tri glide that you pass the webbing through multiple times to lock it in, and they do multiple of those so that the loads disperse. You don't have like a single point of load, uh, and I really like this for lots of reasons. A, the reasons that they mentioned about it being able to move and articulate on its own, but also if you want to make a new pack, like once you make some straps that you love, you don't have to remake those every single time. You can now put this daisy chain on here, which is also like can be in a seam and be really strong and then you can try different straps or you can just transfer your straps over uh or if you're kind of lazy you could make a backpack and then buy the straps from nashville pack and just put them on there because they make awesome straps you know the, I, I just really like this method if you were to tear your strap or something like that you don't you're not the whole backpack's not gone yeah the whole backpack's not gone it's just a really smart way to do it if it's the right type type of bag right there might be a full framed backpack maybe you don't want to do that um for a few reasons but that was really weird i thought i saw a spider on there but there was no spider my bad yeah so lots of options for making remo removable straps it's a great way to go if you're starting out and you just need to uh fix it later on so uh, after you've attached your strap at the shoulder, you got to figure out how you're going to attach the strap at the hip. And let's talk about some options with that. Uh, so the most basic way here in almost every every cottage company for sure is going to use this is uh, you're going to make, let me find one that's easy to show. Here we go. You're basically going to make a little triangle that comes out at 45 degrees. A little wing. A little wing. And what this does is puts the the adjustment going up towards your body so that you don't have any weird twists. Uh, if you were to just have this come straight out, then the, the webbing would come out like this and then try to go up and it gets twisted and it does not feel good. So in this case, you just have this little triangle of fabric here and that's very standard and common and easy to do and strong. Uh, along with that, most packs, you're also gonna see some sort of webbing here with an a tension lock adjuster. That's pretty comfortable. And you know it's going to work. I recently, maybe not recently, for like the past six or seven years, I've been much more into using cordage because I found that it doesn't really make a difference and it's lighter and it's easier to replace if something happens. So, oh gosh. It's very difficult moving all these packs it is. around. I can't wait to be in our new space, but hopefully you guys can see this. It's probably in massively loud on the podcast. <laughs> yep. So in this case, I just have some reflective cordage here and I have a tension lock light. And then I just, there's just a bowline tied at the base. So this is super light. It's just as easy to adjust. Uh, you can use all different types of reflective cordage and colors to match your pack. Like I said, it's easy to do. So maybe an option you might consider, although this is more of an ultralight option. So if you're going to carry like a yak on your back, you <laughs> might want to use some some tougher stuff. And if you if you still want to go with the uh, interchangeable strap style, um, you could use the string Z buckle in this uh, application as well. That is a very cool buckle. Section number six is about the accessories. Perhaps the sexiest part of the strap are the things that you build into, attach to, or clip onto the strap. Uh, so that's what we're going on to. Carter, you're kind of an accessory connoisseur. Everything I know about strap accessories, I think, comes from you. So tell us about them. Uh, yeah, so there are the obvious ones, right? You 
we've we've shown a few i'm not going to get it out again because it probably sounds like six labradors jumping in a pile of leaves but <laughs> basically <laughs> what? I don't know why that was funny. We, we should leave that in there yep. it's like um, your mom saying isaac john osborne <laughs> My mom does not say that to me. That would be very <laughs> strange. If she said that, I would come to fight you. Um, yeah, so you have your basic sewn-in pockets, right? That's going to be extremely common on the vest style, and it's becoming a lot more common on pretty much all straps to have some sort of sewn-on, always there, stretchy mesh pockets that you can put your phone, you can put snacks, you can put water, you can put uh, leaves, whatever you want to put in there. <laughs> Whatever you want to put in there, you can. Um, for some people, that's going to work great because it's sewn there. You know you want it there. That's totally fine. However, uh, you can also basically get those exact same pockets, but they're removable, right? So if you get an, if you make a new backpack, uh, you can just put a simple daisy chain on there. It makes the construction process much easier. And then you can just put your stretchy pocket that you made that just attaches to the daisy chain, similar to how the sternum strap works or the removable straps work and then you can just put it on or off you can choose to put it on the left side or the right side you can choose to not have it at all um so i think those are uh i would like to come out with some kits for those in the future because i think that that's something that can spruce up your backpack that you already have that maybe doesn't have built-in water bottle pockets or whatever that may be and then there are lots of versions of those so you might have a zippered one you might have one that has i don't know printed labradors and leaves on it or whatever the case may be it's actually a new pattern coming out fall uh 2023 labrador leaves uh you can there are another really common uh place for storage is just having some sort of gear hanging loops whether this is a spot for a carabiner where you can just hang your personal locator beacon off of it or a knife or whatever you want to do uh, that could literally just be a piece of webbing that you've sewn on it could be a larger uh piece that's like specifically designed for like holding your camera uh, you know similar this, to the evolve supply ranger backpack you know this podcast is running long when carter can't say gear loop but he can say personal locator beacon perfectly <laughs> uh i've had 15 shots of vinegar before this so there's a lot of great accessories would recommend checking it out uh or don't yeah. go with any accessories. Or don't. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I don't. I don't like accessories on my straps. So. Oh really? You're a clean strap guy. Yeah. Unless it's a running vest. Loser. Interesting. That's a different because that that was one of my favorite things that I made last year. Uh, was when I went hiking and I took the SWD. I can't remember the model now, but SWD's got nice straps, comfortable straps, but there's just daisy chain on there. I really wanted a space for my phone and a space for a soft flask. So I built just a couple little pouches. That was my favorite one of my favorite things that I made because it made, I mean, I love the rest of that pack, but I why I want something on the straps. It seems like wasted space to me. So it's kind of cool that you're just a totally yeah, clean strap. It makes me feel claustrophobic. Yeah, I know that's kind of weird, but no, I mean, I think that's the yeah, beauty of being able to make your own straps or starting that journey is that then you can just not have it. Yeah. Whereas some companies you might have to have those straps on there and you really don't want them. So. All right. Yep. Isaac, as far as I know, there are two main ways to construct your straps. So, we're on to section seven now, which is construction. What are they? Uh, so you have basting and binding, which is basically you're going to have the inside fabric and the outside fabric, and you sew them together, and then you bind around the outside. Uh, that's definitely going to be the easiest, most simple construction. Um, you're probably not going to get a whole lot of foam in there because if you're running this through a binding attachment, you might get some hang-ups in there. going to be tough. Um, but Once yeah, that's you're binding it by hand, and you're just a G. So yeah, that's not ideal. Um, and then the other method is uh, just like you would sew any other bag or anything like that. You're going to sew them face to face. Uh, you're going to sew it inside out. You're going to turn them right side out, and then uh, put your foam in there somehow. Whether you're stuffing it by hand or you're using like a a coat hanger or whatever. Um, those are the the two main construction methods. As always, make sure you finish your raw edges and don't leave like a super abrasive spot, like right over your peck. Cause if you're massive and jacked like Isaac, then you might get chafed. Another thing I would say here for construction that's important is 
having some sort, even if you don't want to put any daisy chain or anything on your pack, it's a good idea to put some bar tacks or some sewing along the straps. Uh, that'll help keep uh, the, the layers together and the foam in place so that things aren't twisting and rolling around. Um, I highly recommend doing that. Also, technically, I don't know if this is actually true, but it seems cool to think about, is that whenever you sew through foam or something thick, you basically create like these indents. And I like to think of them as like I'm getting a little bit of airflow in those spots. That's probably not the case, but it just seems cool. <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> yeah, especially when you have... So for these straps, I did use a laminate. Um, this was early on in the game. But I had... I have this webbing that goes the length of the strap, which helps to stabilize the strap, but also keeps these two layers from, you know, moving too much. So it keeps those in place. Yeah. Makes sense. Sweet. So a little recap for all of you that are so somewhat lost or exhausted now. Seven mm-hmm. sections to building your strap. And for a lot of you that have never made straps before, Take a look at these sections. Take a look at some of the associated content that we'll release with this. And you'll have a pretty good, pretty good start. But let's do a brief little recap. I'm going to challenge you all to give like one sentence examples for some of these. So Carter, what are the things you got to consider with pack application? Uh, pack usage, body type, and actually pack usage and body type. Yeah, it's based style, body type, the goal, load lifters. Isaac, for strap styles, what are the primary strap styles that a beginner should really be? Well, primary strap styles, what would you recommend for a beginner? Uh, easiest is definitely going to be a J strap. And then once you go from there, you have S straps and vest style straps and then hybrid straps. And an easy way to get into some of those is to use a pattern such as Learn MYOG. Uh, some of his packs have great patterns. 100% agree with that. Also, I made these straps by taking Carter's Nashville uh, Nashville pack cutaway straps, laying them on the table and tracing them out. Sorry, Levi and Grant. But also, you can totally do that too. Take a shoulder strap off your pack or lay it down. You can trace it if you just want to mess. I just wanted to practice. I've never backpack with these specifically, but that's an easy way to practice. Carter, materials and components? You got a lot of them. You got the front of the strap, the back of the strap, the padding of the strap. You have all the components that you would need to attach the strap if they're removable or adjust the webbing. You have the sternum strap stuff that you need, um, whether that's buckles or um, I don't know what you would use besides buckles, like maybe some hooks or yep, nailed it. Night eyes cam jam. I don't know. Isaac, what do you need to remember about sternum straps? Uh, there's a few different adjustment places, and you need to figure out how you want to attach it to the straps at the side. And then how you're going to get in and out of it, and then how you're going to adjust it side. To I side. guess they need to figure out how many they want. We never talked about the qu- the quantity, but probably yeah. one to two. You probably don't need four of them. Yeah, and that's also going to depend on your strap shape. If you have a super crazy S strap, you if you put two on there, one of them's going to be like around your belly <laughs> button. Inches and, yeah, wide, and yeah. that's going to be six. Yeah, uh, Carter, what do they need to know about attaching the straps to the pack? Sew them on if you want to. If you're going to do that, you need to put it in a strong seam and make sure you get any angles down that you want them to have. Uh, if you want to sew them onto the pack, it's a good idea to maybe cover that up. Um, and then you have removable. So if you want to do that, you can attach a D ring to the top. You could do it with a buckle. You could do it with Daisy chain. Um, it is a more versatile option and it can save you some money by not having to make more than one pair of straps. I was about to ask Isaac about accessories, but you're maybe the, Worst person to ask about <laughs> strap accessories, but I think everyone knows these by by now. And then get your construction right. All right, so that was our uh, pretty succinct but way too long overview of how to make your own straps. We're gonna make some other content around this, so keep eyes out for other videos. Um, we might even do other stuff. So look at our blogs. Maybe we'll throw a PDF together to help you make your straps. But backpacks are really fun. Straps are scary, but they're totally worth diving in at first. Yeah, straps are. Uh as they say, kind of where the rubber meets the road. That was country. I thought you were going to make like a strap pun with that. Like, it's, you know, it's where the spacer mesh. For strapping young men like us or something. <laughs> I've thought about that way too many times this episode, making that joke. Uh, so two, things, away. two things I want to end on. Um, number one, I know that there's a lot in this episode and I feel like we didn't even cover everything because... <laughs> 
people I think often overlook straps, but when you get down to it, there are a ton of different yeah. variables and permutations of a strap that might make your outside or just workday experience better. Uh, just start trying to make something. Um, it'll be fun. You'll learn a lot. My second recommendation is that absolutely go online, go to uh, some of the different pack makers out there. We've mentioned a lot in this episode. They'll probably be linked below. And just look at how they make straps. A lot of how I learned about them is by looking at different backpacks online and thinking, oh, that's a really cool way that they attach that. Or, oh, that makes sense. Or, oh, that's the thickness of foam they use. Maybe I should start with that. Um, so those are the two things. Go for it. And it can be really helpful to use the interwebs. Definitely. All right. Well, in closing, thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in and checking out another one of our episodes. Uh, as always, please, please, please like, rate, comment, subscribe, rate, review, do whatever it is you need to do. Smash that notifications bell to help they say. us help <clears throat> you with better content. And uh, yeah, make good gear, drink good beer. I'm Jameson. And remember, make good gear, drink good beer. <laughs> that was me. Bye, everybody. Goodbye.